practice them, we were able to set our hero's position and we were able to show the hero on the screen. But we need to do a little bit more than that. We want to make the application interactive. So we're going to need to handle some events. Uh, events are things that happen in JavaScript that are going to cause, you know, cause some kind of action. Uh, and we can react to events. So there are a lot of different events. We can handle events for mouse clicks. We can handle events for mouse, your mouse being moved. Uh, we can also handle an event called a key press. And we could handle key press here, but key press isn't really going to do what we need to do because when you deal with key press, your movement can be pretty jagged. You know, so we could do something like uh, we could say right in our code, we could say document.onKeyPress, and then we can define a function right here. And this would work. This would allow us to move our hero around, but it would be less than perfect. It would be suboptimal. Uh, and the reason for that is because the movement would actually not occur uh, fluidly. We'd get a key press when we hold down a character, and then we'd get a series of key presses afterward. But there'd be a bit of a stutter in between. So we're going to do things a little differently here. We're going to use document on key down. We're going to set this equal to a function so that we can get events when someone presses a key. We're also going to use document.onKeyUp so that we can get events when someone releases that key as well. And in order to handle these, we're going to create a few functions. We're going to create a function called ToggleKey. And that's going to take a key code as well as a isPressed Boolean argument. So this function, when it's called, we're going to set the state of a value here. And we should actually create another variable here called our controller. And that's going to be another object. And what we're going to do is in our on key down function or on key down uh, event handler, we're going to call toggle key with ebt.keycode. And for key down, we'll say is pressed is true. We'll do this something similar for on key up. We will set uh, that our is pressed value to it false. So you can see this is going to become is pressed. And then in our function, we don't actually know what our key codes are going to be. So we're going to actually just log them for now. So console.log key code. So now if we refresh our page and we show our JavaScript console by going to view developer JavaScript console, we should be able to see all of our different key codes. So I'm just pressing some keys here and you can see there are a lot of them. But if I want to press left, up, right, and down, you can see here we have 38, 30, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So I'm going to define some values in my in my program here so that I can use those. So I'm going to use bar up key or left key is equal to, I think we said 37. Yeah, 37. I'm going to say bar up key is equal to 38. Bar right key is equal to 39. And bar down key is equal to 40. And this is just going to allow me allow my program to be a little more readable so that when I'm interacting with my controller, I have a better idea of what keys are actually being pushed. So now in my toggle key function, I'm going to use an if statement. And if the key code is equal to left key, we're going to want to say controller.left equals true. So what we're doing here is we're defining a new property on our controller, and we're just setting that equal to true. So and then we'll do the same thing for the right key. We'll also do a up and a down. Except we don't want to actually set these to true, we want to set these to is pressed. So there we go. Now we'll be able to control our hero through the actions of this controller. So what's going to happen now is just like a game controller on an Xbox or a PlayStation, uh, when we press our up key, it's going to press this controller's uh, up or it's going to set this controller's up property to true. When we release that, it's going to set the up property to false. So this gets us uh, part of the way to where we need to be. Uh, now we could do something like, you know, every time this is changed, we could, uh, we could just modify the hero.x, hero.y directly, but we're going to want to expand on that, and we're going to want to create something called a game loop here. 
So I'm going to define a new function at the bottom of my, uh, at the bottom of my function area here. And our game loop is going to run all of our actions for our game. So in our game loop, we can do things like update our screen. We can update the position of our enemies. We can respond to controller. Uh, we can do all sorts of things. But we typically want to run about 24 frames of uh, animation per second here so that our game is going to look smooth. And if we open our calculator, you can see computer run, or the browser runs in timing of milliseconds. If we divide that by 24, we see we get about 41. So if we change that to 40, you know, if we say 40, that'll give us 25 uh, frames per second, which is pretty reasonable. So in order to do that, we need to create a variable uh, because we want to call this loop function uh, every every couple of milliseconds. Now, in order to call this repeatedly, uh, we're going to create we're going to use a feature in JavaScript, one of its functions called set timeout. And what set timeout does is it allows you to call a function later. So we're going to call this set timeout loop function every two milliseconds, but we're not going to react to it. We're not going to do anything every two milliseconds. We want to declare a new variable up at, our, at the top here. And we want to call that variable last loop run. We'll just set that to zero because we only want to do we want to do work every four, every uh, every 40 milliseconds or so. So what we will do here is we will say if new date dot get time, which will give us a timestamp in milliseconds. We say new date dot get time minus last loop run is greater than 40, then we're actually going to do our work here. Then down at the bottom of this, we'll set last loop run equal to new date dot get time. So what's going to happen now is we're going to call set timeout loop every two milliseconds. When we call loop, and we should call loop down here at the bottom, just to get that started. When loop is called, it's going to check this uh, this first if statement. And if new date dot get time minus last loop run is greater than 40, well, get time is going to return a very large number. It's going to be uh, it's actually the number of milliseconds since 1970. Uh, so that's actually going to be pretty big right now. So if we subtract zero from it, because we're starting last loop run at zero, that's going to definitely be more than 40. So we're going to run this, uh, run the code within our if statement, which now is not really doing anything except for resetting the value of our last loop run. So now you can see we're creating this new date dot get time, which is going to reset our timestamp. So when we're done with that, we'll call loop, and that's going to run in two milliseconds. And when we get back here, you'll see that the new time is only going to be about two milliseconds uh, past what our last loop run uh, value is. So that's not going to run. That's actually going to happen a few times, but this is going to keep our timing nice and uh, nice and consistent, uh, so that we don't have to worry about slowdowns in our processing or you know odd uh, odd slow motion effects in our game. So probably the first thing we're going to want to do. In our uh, in our loop here is handle the controls. So I'm going to create a new function called handle controls. And what handle controls is going to do is just allow me to interact with my controllers. So I'm going to check the controller state. If controller dot up, well, if the controller is up, we want to move our hero up. So our hero, just like we said, we have a x y coordinate system where y is uh, zero at the top and x is zero at the left, and then X increases as we move to the right, and Y increases as we move down. So if we want to move our hero up, we need to use hero.y minus, or is hero.y is equal to hero.y minus 5. Now, we can actually create a shorthand for this. Instead of typing all of that, we can use hero.y minus equals 5, which is just going to say hero.y is equal to hero.y minus 5. So it's just a nice uh, language feature that exists in JavaScript and Java and C++ and C Sharp and, uh, and uh, Python as well. So it's pretty consistent across a lot of different types of languages. So let's go ahead and finish handling our controller here. Now we're going to modify the x value. And we will, if we want to move left, we're going to reduce that. And if controller dot right, hero dot x plus equals 5. Now, we could use this hard-coded value of 5, but I'm going to go ahead and change that. I'm going to create another variable at the top here, and I'm going to call that hero movement. We'll go ahead and set that to 5, because this way, if we want to change how quickly the hero can move, we can do that very easily.
So we also want to show our sprites in their new positions. So we'll create another function here called function show sprites. And what this is going to do right now, the only sprite I have on my screen is my hero. So I'm going to set position of my hero. And we'll call that show sprites right down here after we after we call our handle controls. So I don't need to set my position here because I'm going to set my position every time I run this loop. And now, when I refresh the screen, assuming I haven't made any errors, I should be able to move my hero around. And you can see here, moving, I'm hitting my left, right, and up and down keys, and I'm getting nice fluid motion out of my hero. And he's moving a little fast. We probably want to adjust his movement. You know, we could make this all the way down to one, which is going to say he's going to run one pixel every millisecond or every cycle. So we're running uh, about 25 cycles per second. And you can see it looks like this hero is moving. And I think maybe three is probably a good amount here. So we can use three and give that some fluid motion without being too uh, too fast. So this gives me the, this is, shows us how we can define our game loop. And our game loop is where we're going to continue to add functionality. We're going to call it a different functions that perform different uh, different actions, different jobs. So in our current game loop, we're just running it every every 40 milliseconds. Here we're adjusting our, our world or our game world based on controls, and we're showing our sprites. Uh, right now, there's only one. Uh, but now we can handle events. We can move our hero around the screen. Uh, we can actually you know, start seeing how this game is going to develop. So in the next lesson, we're going to get into actually causing this hero to fire something and uh, maybe simplifying a few things here as well.